Now, it's time to learn some tips and advices that sometimes we have to apply during our projects. Have a closer look at the exterior walls. Actually, I just realized that there is something we have to change here. This narrow area is the finished face of the wall, which normally has to face outdoors. So how can we flip the wall structure without changing the plan? Sometimes this can be a bit tricky, but you are going to understand this. First, to select all the exterior walls, I pick up one, right click, select all instances, and then choose entire project. In this case, a visible view would also work. Now, if you remember, I can hit the space bar to flip the wall to the other side, but it's actually changing the position. And this is because I'm flipping according to the position of the location line. Let's go back and you can see that currently it's on the finish face exterior. If I change to wall center line, I am now able to flip the wall by pressing the space bar to the other side without changing the wall's position. So, this is the way to solve this kind of issues. In this part, we will continue with our floor plan and this time we are going to insert floors in the building. So, to insert a floor, let's click on Floor Architectural. And we are going to start with the ground floor. The first thing, I'm going to select my type. And let's choose this thick one because it's for the ground. As you can see, the thickness is 480 millimeters. Another thing, like the stairs, floors open in the sketch mode. And this time we are going to choose this method to pick walls. Here is simple. I'm going to click in each four exterior walls. And at the end, just click on the tick over here to confirm the floor. Now we have a floor below the level zero and in the 3D view, we can have a better perspective of its appearance. Now let's switch to the first floor and here we are going to place another floor for this level. This time we will choose a different type with less thickness. This floor upper with 160 millimeters. In the same way as the floor below, I'm starting with picking walls and then I need an empty area without floor here around the stairs in order that people can reach the first floor, of course. The method I'm choosing is I'm switching here to draw a line, then I go to this intersection and draw an area with lines here. Then everything can be edited later if we need. Now, be aware with this, if I click on the tick, I get a message from Revit saying that lines cannot intersect each other. As I'm making a geometry which is actually a polygon to draw a floor, I have to erase this segment. There are several ways to do this, but I will use this command, split an element. This is simple, try to find this intersection and click there. Do the same on the other side, and now this line is separated in segments, then I click on modify to be able to select the line and delete it. Now if I confirm the changes, ah, but there is an important information. Would you like walls that go up to this level to attach to its bottom? Since the floor is generated below the current level height, if I answer yes to that question, the walls on the ground floor will decrease its height in order to attach to the bottom of the floor. So I click on attach and the floor is created. Now have a look at the section view. You can see the interior walls are now top constrained by the floor instead of the level, as it was originally. Ok, the next step we are going to the roof level and let's insert a roof here. The option I'm going to choose is Roof by Footprint. At the options bar there are a few settings. 
and by default I have the option Define Slope ticked. Let's leave it. And as the roof opens in the sketch mode, I'm going to use the same method as for the floors. Let's go to the walls and I can draw the roof boundary either in the interior or exterior side. Of course, we should cover all the walls with the roof, so better to click on the exterior face of the wall. Then I select all the others and confirm the roof. It's done. Now look, it seems that the roof is flat on the top, but it isn't. Actually, what I am seeing has to do with the values I defined on the view range, but that's something we will cover later. Now I'm switching to a 3D view and the roof fits perfectly within the walls, as you can see. Nice. In this exercise, this is not what we want. The roof will look like this, so we need to edit slopes and we will set an overhang. Going back, I'm going to delete the roof and insert a new one. This time I'm going to change the overhang to 300 millimeters. With this, the roof boundary is drawn at 30 centimeters from the face, and that face, it can either be the interior or the exterior one. Here we need to pick the exterior face and then select the other walls. Next, every edge has a slope defined as a 30 degree angle. However, I don't want a slope for the left and right faces. I click first on Modify, I select this line, hold Ctrl and select the opposite one on the other side. Then on Properties, I'm going to remove the tick here on Define Slope. Next, the remaining two sides we still keep the slope, but with a smaller angle. Then, for the remaining two edges, we will keep the slope, but with a smaller angle just 18 degrees and we have to change it here. Also, there are several families already loaded for roofs. The select one is this generic roof with 400 millimeters of thickness. Let's change it to a different one, for example the first family. Here the thickness is 366.5, the sum of all these components. Finally, I can save the changes and have a look at the result at the 3D view. Ok, now as you can imagine, we should join the exterior walls to the roof. And yes, all the four sides, because as you can see, even the walls where I have the slope need to be attached. Ok, this method is simple. Click on this wall. Then with the right button, go to select all instances and entire project. Next, I have to go here and click on attach to top base, in this case an element at the top. Finally, I select the element which is the roof. Aha, now our house looks much better. Now on the next chapter we will talk about elevations and how to create sections. So we are now at the ground floor plan. And these symbols indicate there is a view in the direction of the arrow. Those views are the elevations. And by default we have east elevation, north elevation, south elevation and west elevation. Let's open the east elevation and as you remember one main characteristic of these views is that we can see the position of each level. Now let's switch to the north elevation and here we can see the levels are not wide enough. But don't worry because they are easy to stretch. I go to this grip, click and hold and as you can see I'm dragging all the levels to the left side. And then I do the same for the right side. The reason they are moving all together is because I have this constraint with this lock and that means if I extend one line all the others come together. Then the south elevation have the levels in the same position because these views are parallel planes. 
and a similar situation happens to the west and east elevations. Now let's learn about sections. To insert a section, we need to be at the floor plan first of all. Then go to view. I'm going to click on section. And this is simple. I just need to click on two points and in this case I am making a horizontal section. This rectangle is the view range. And what happened here is like I sliced the house at this line and I am viewing what is inside towards the windows. Then in the project browser you can see that a new group for section appeared. And if I click in this plus I can see I've generated the section 1. We can see the windows, both exterior and interior walls, and the roof. Okay, we are going to learn how we can edit this. In this arrow, I can switch the direction of the point of view. And this time you can see it's facing towards the door. If I move the area in a way that I leave the doors outside, they will not show in the drawing, only the door that was inside. Finally, a similar situation is if I drag the area to the left, now this part will be hidden. Ok, in this exercise we are also going to draw a vertical section. This time I click in this place, drag the pointer up and click again in this side. Here, the goal of making this section is because I want to check out how the stairs look like inside the building. Basically, I've created a section 2, I'm going to open it, and here you can see the stairs that go from the ground floor up to the first floor. Nice. But now let's go back and open the view of the first floor. This time I'm going to drag the section to this area where this part is not covered by the floor here. When you go back to the section 2 and you will notice that this height between the stairs and the next floor is not high enough for a person to pass through. This means we cannot place the stairs here, so we have to change them. Or maybe changing the house. As you remember, this tutorial is intended to be a practical exercise. So, on the next chapter, we will learn some tips to make modifications to this building. How to change the position of the exterior walls or aligning elements. And basically, we will be using a lot the modify tools. Let's start. On the exercise for the next chapter, we will modify some elements of our house in order to get this result. We are going to change the exterior wall at the front. Then we need to edit the floors. We will learn to create balconies, among other modifications. So let's start. Ok, first I'm going to hide these sections, as they are not necessary right now. I select both elements. And then I will use this tool, Temporary Hide Isolate. In this menu, I'm going to select Hide Element and you can see the sections are now hidden. This blue border with this label, Temporary Hide Isolate, indicates that the next time that I open this project, the sections will appear again in this view. Now, the next step, I'm going to increase the entrance hall. There are several ways to do this. And the method I will use is splitting the wall with this command, split an element. I'm going to place the cursor on the wall and let's try to split in this intersection with the interior wall. Now, you have to make sure the wall is highlighted or one of its tracking lines. Look that it says here exterior wall. However, if I move a bit up, now it highlights the interior wall instead. And if I click, I split the wrong wall. In the warning it says I cannot keep the elements joined. So click on cancel. Let's try again. And now 
I can click here, then I press escape, select the wall and you can see there are two exterior walls at this moment. Ok, now let's try to move this wall downwards. Hmm, they are coming both together. Why? By default, both walls are joined at this point. And I have to do an operation to allow them to separate. One of the ways is, click here with the right button and then click on Disallow Join. Now with the Move command, I select this endpoint as my start point and now I can drag the wall 1000 mm to this side. Nice, but still I have some problems here. First, you can notice the floor came together. That's alright, because this is something we will fix after. Then we have this warning, highlighted walls are attached to but miss the highlighted targets. Sometimes it's a bit hard to notice what the target is and in this case it's actually the roof. I can notice that if I switch to the section tool. As you can see, both wall and roof are highlighted because they don't attach to each other anymore. Let's click on detach targets and then later I have to fix the roof. But let's continue. Back on the ground floor, I'm going to insert now an exterior wall. And now, mm, I think the finish face is not on the right side. Yes, it's true. But we can fix this easily. Just switch the location line to finish face interior. And I'm going to try again. Ah. It's not this the right point, press escape and try at this end point instead. Yes, it's here. Then click to intersect to the wall below. Mm, the walls didn't join because before I activated the option disallow join to the wall. When this happens, just click on this symbol to join the walls again. Now let's view the result in a 3D view. Ah, save the project. And look, the walls are now correct, but there are things we still have to fix here. And next, I can start with editing the floors. Ok, on the ground floor view, let's double click in the grey border, which is the floor. As you can see, now I can edit the boundary. And this time I'm going to use the line tool and connect this point to the intersection between these walls and after connect down here. Press escape. And next, I have to use a command to erase these portions here. It's this one, trim extend to corner. I simply go to an intersection and click on the segments that I want to keep. And it forms a corner there. Finally, I accept the changes this first floor is fixed, then I have to move to the first floor view. Here, I'm going to repeat the process. So I double click on the floor. But this time the boundary will be a bit different, as we are going to create a balcony at the front facade. Now I'm going to displace this grip horizontally to the exterior face of this wall. The start point is here. And then make it with 700 mm of length downwards. Then a new line to where I find this intersection. Make a vertical line to connect here. And close the boundary on the corner. Finally, we can use Trim Extend to Corner again to finish editing the floor. Click to accept the changes. And here, I click on attach and we have just finished editing both floors. Ok, this is the end of the part 4 and on the next part we will continue with this chapter.